When my father first started working, it was all hand tools, bracing bits, you know, no electric. Warren Purdy had one electric drill, and that was it. And everything else was all hand. But I got a lot of tools up there my father never had. That old wooden box up there is my steam box. You can see the hose sticking down. That's what I put into the box for the uh, water vapor or steam to go in. When we were building the skiffs, we had it about 100 degrees in here. I mean, you could hardly see across the room. And I would say about 40 skiffs were built from that steam box. But I did most of my equipment with the hand saws. My father was one expert on sharpening hand saws. You can't get the stuff for wooden boats. You can get it for fiberglass boats, but you can't get good plywood. You can't get good white cedar. When I was bought the place, I could get teak for two dollars a foot. Now it's about twenty-five dollars a foot. A lot of times, the old timers would make a half model and go from there. And you bend a uh, piece of wood around the right thickness, and uh, if it bends around the model, then you know it bends around the boat. Yeah. All these are my patterns. You got the Seaford skiff. You got a 22-foot garby in here. You got an 18-foot garby in here. You got a rowboat in here. You got a dink in here. You got my father's double end uh, sailboat. Yeah. These are all my patterns. You just get an idea in your head. You want to build it, and you do it. If you have the wood and time. Yeah. Once you've built a mold for a fiberglass boat, you can build hundreds of them. With a wooden boat, you get the form, you still have to put it together. And, uh, but a lot of people like the wooden boats because they're solider. The stuff we build around here just run through a fiberglass boat. <laughs> <laughs> when a storm comes, I never have a boat on, up on land. I had one uh, Sharpie out there tied to the garage. An 18-footer. And I had two Seaford skiffs in a shop. But the worst place to have a boat is on land during a bad storm. If it floats off your uh, blocking, it could come down and land on something and put a hole in it. If you tie it across the creek, it just goes up and down, as long as it doesn't hit anything. I left them in the shop. I figured I'd be safe. i never seen water 32 inches higher than uh, Irene. It was up. So it was over my furnace, my hot water heater, and everything else. So those boats were having a good time in here. But it's a good thing they were in here. If they were out there, I could have really got beat up.